you're at the Museum of Tolerance showing this film about the uh, Argentinian bombing and the, 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 the subsequent cover-up, the death, the suspicious death of uh, Alberto Nisman. Yes, sir. Are you Jewish? I'm actually not Jewish. How did this picture become important to you? The picture started as an interesting story about a prosecutor who was murdered in Argentina. And as I started unpeeling the onion of what the story was about, it became a geopolitical narrative of utmost importance uh, for the Jewish community, which is very important to me, and also for the safety of the entire world in relation to Iran and the climate and, and how they're trying to obtain nuclear weapons. So the story became a, a way for me to build a blueprint on what was what dealing with Iran means right. off a story that was current and happening now. Now the uh, attack against the Iranian, it wasn't an, uh, an Israeli embassy or consulate or anything, it was against a Jewish community center, wasn't it? Yes, it was. these, these were, were people who were hanging out, they were doing projects, they were helping, they were part of the community. Um, this was not a military target, this was not a state target. This was a, a target of people who did not deserve nor, nor uh, needed this, this kind of provocation. Why did Iran, uh, assuming that they did, why, why did uh, Islamic terrorists get involved in blowing up in our, uh, on the other side of the globe from Israel and from Iran to blow up a Jewish community center and kill these scores of people? Well, a little known secret about Argentina is that they are a very advanced nuclear power. They have a very, very advanced nuclear technology. They have very advanced, actually, space technology. Argentina. Argentina. And what happened was the government of Iran was working with Argentina to obtain nuclear technology. Right. And the United States, uh, George H.W. Bush at the time, had asked Carlos Menem to stop working with Iran and do not give them the technology, okay. at which they ceased. And their response was the Ami bombing. Uh, but w w why attack a Jewish community center over uh, an atomic uh, materials deal? Because I Iran is making a point. And uh -huh. they're, they're making a point that that you know when you when you attack a civilian target uh -huh. it is it is a a how do you say this it is a, a statement that strikes at the core of everybody uh -huh. a military target or state t target is military and state they uh -huh. they military does war state does international whatever. They, they, so was it like extortion? They're trying to say uh, don't stop dealing with us or we'll continue getting, you'll, you'll be bombed? It could be extortion. Uh -huh. um, it, it's also very well a showing them that they should have not ceased giving them technology. And let's be honest, at the end of the day, uh -huh. Iran is still working with Argentina. So it worked. It did work. I mean, at the end of the day, this, this, you know, there may have been a gap of 20 years, right. but the MOU was signed in 2013 by the president of, of, of Argentina, and they continued working with them. And the AMIO was pushed aside. Uh -huh. And if, if you are the president of Iran and you're willing to overlook your civilians being killed to work with a country that did the killing, right. Well, you know, I mean, that, I think the Iranians had, had played a calculated hand uh -huh. and succeeded. Uh -huh. uh, you, you're, I assume you're assuming that there are agents working for the regime who, who conducted this act, executed this act in Argentina, correct? There, yes, absolutely. Yeah. There are uh, large, large uh, contingencies of, of Iranians in Argentina in Uruguay and some other countries uh -huh. um, that are recruiting, that are setting up operations, and they are actively working within these countries, uh, yeah. maybe not in a terrorist fashion, but definitely in a geopolitical fashion. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Los Angeles has, a second large, has the largest community of uh, Iranians mm -hmm. outside of Iran itself. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the chances that there are agents who would conduct terror activities on behalf of the regime when once they were called upon it could be very high 
I mean, I don't know, I, to be honest with you. I mean, the United States is very different than Argentina. We are more vigilant. Um, and we are actively working with Iran at this point in time. You know, and we just gave them a hundred, was it a hundred million dollars? A billion. A billion? A yeah. hundred billion dollars yeah. of taxpayer money. Yeah. Um, yeah. So will they go blowing anything up at any time soon? Probably not. But I don't, they don't need to do those kinds of activities to, to further their agenda. There are many ways to further an agenda. Uh -huh. That, I would say, would be a, a final solution to getting what they want uh -huh. but they but they operate in many you know a lot of a lot of ways so you know are they active absolutely <laughs> uh -huh. are, are you particularly zionistic um in, ter in terms of uh, supporting uh, israel as a, a jewish in independent sovereignty i do support israel as a jewish independent sovereignty but you were, you were not an activist in using this picture to to, to uh, advance that idea or, or or how much of a factor has that been I mean, I'm a huge supporter of Israel, okay. um, I, but I also live in a country that is, is doing the same kinds of, is dealing with these same kinds of evil entities. Right. So whether you're Israel or you live in America, I mean, I, I live in lower Manhattan where we have been, and I also live in Washington, D.C., where we uh -huh. have been uh, victims of, of mass terrorism right. on a huge scale. Especially lower Manhattan. Especially lower Manhattan. I mean, I walk outside and there's the, there's the Freedom Tower every day. Yeah. So it's, it's not, you know, it's not whether it's like, oh, it's, you know, is it Zionism? It's terrorism anywhere. This is an entity that will do this. What did the Argentinians do? They're, you know, what do they have to do with, with Iran or, any, or, or, or Israel or any of these things? But they right. are still victims, right. you know, whether they are or they are, are not. I mean, they are still victims. So it, this, is, this, is an, this particular topic uh -huh. touches everybody. Yes. In the whole world, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. anyone who deals with them, it doesn't matter. It could be, it could be uh, uh, France who deals with Iran, and if right. they don't give them what they want, they could suffer these consequences. Any place that suffers terrorism, that's, that's, you know, it's uncalled for, or, you know, I mean, uh -huh. so I mean, look you at have, Brussels. Do you, you have a connection to San Francisco? Um, I have worked with the San Francisco Ballet, or filmed with their, their dancers to do uh -huh. fine arts material, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and I actually quite like San Francisco when I come to California. <laughs> so how do you think this picture will go? Uh, you, you mentioned uh, film festivals. How do you th suppose this will be received by the curators of film festivals who are by and large liberal mm -hmm. and may identify with the notion of, of, of promoting the U.S. Iran detente? I would say this. This film does not... Remember, if you'll notice, there's no narrator, right? I didn't write a single word of the film. This is... These people are speaking their opinions. There is no proof that anything happened. There's no proof that anyone killed Nisman. Uh -huh, uh -huh. There's a lot of circumstantial evidence, uh -huh. but there's no proof. There's no smoking gun. Mm -hmm. These are all a series of events that happened very at the same time. So the question is, will the people who view the film be willing to watch a film that it does not talk about Democrats or Republicans. It, it talks about people who were killed mm -hmm. and these people may have been the perpetrators of that murder. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say Iran as a country, the people of Iran are, are evil. It says, it says that the government of Iran, right. and, it, and the people who were labeled right. in the red notices right. were the government of Iran, the president, the head, you know. Uh -huh. So it is not, this isn't a partisan issue. Yeah. The Iran deal was not actually in play when we started the film. Uh -huh. It was localized to Argentina, and we uh -huh. have made the film for an Argentinian audience. As, as you can tell, it's very Argentinian leaning. Right. Um, you right. know, but again, it is a blueprint to say, look, these are the things that can happen if you work with Iran. You know, and it's not about being partisan. I have no part in the Iran deal. I don't even uh -huh. know what would happen. <laughs> would you just elucidate one, one point? You made a point in your remarks at the, after the panel that Interpol uh, basically had, what, a warrant out for the mm -hmm. arrest of these Iranian officials? Yes. Should they travel outside of Iran? Yes. Yes, that's what the red notices were. They would be arrested. And this is why... Iran was funneling money through Chavez to pay for Kirshner's presidential election so that she could, you know, do something about the red notices. Mm -hmm. So, 
with Stuso, when, when they wanted Stuso back, he was given a, I believe, a yellow notice. They use a color system. So that was essential. They wanted those red notices lifted. So that they could travel. Yes, and by, the, by signing the MOU, the MOU would negate the red notices. And that was why Niesman was upset. All that work to get the red notices, you know, because it was very difficult. Again, you know, Interpol did not take, make the decision li lightly, you know, or take it lightly. But the fact that they made any kind, remember, he had eight people he wanted to target or ten people. They right. gave him five. So he didn't even get everything he wanted. But Interpol felt there was enough evidence that uh -huh. these guys were connected. Uh -huh. What do we know about the uh, Bolivian bases, the Iranian bases, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, daily flights nonstop now between uh, Venezuela and Tehran? What do we know about what Iran is, is situating in South America uh, as a strategic uh, threat to North America? Well, you know, and I, I can't speak on the Bolivian one particularly, but I can say that Iran has a very vested interest in South America. Um, obviously, the tri-border area has a lot of Hezbollah activity and other things going on. Um, and, in, and again, Iran is a very organized, well-funded um, country. In their, this is this is not, and they're patient. Mm -hmm. They're not going to run around blowing up train stations and things. Uh -huh. Because uh -huh. it, it, everything is is uh, very organized and specific. Mm -hmm. So, do I expect? an Iranian agent to blow up a train going from X to Y? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Do I expect them to send agents into the communities and work on the ground with the local citizens? Mm -hmm. Possibly yes. yes. Do I, you know, so th that's kind of the active. They are sending people and setting up camps and things in South America, throughout mm -hmm. the, the continent. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we'll, we'll see <laughs> how things go. So.